Hi, my name is Gabriela Cruz, and this is my public policy making project presentation, tracing SB5 through the process. I'm going to start by recognizing and defining the issue, and this policy is trying to solve voter fraud, and this issue has existed since the conception of democracy, where ballots could be manipulated and can be seen on all levels of government. So while this issue concerns thousands of people, mainly people of color and minorities from voting in state and national elections, that may feel like they could be discriminated against because of this law. So both Texas Senate and the House approved SB 5, a voter ID overhaul, of an original bill passed in 2011. The original bill, SB 14, had many opponents in court and needed to be revised. The updated bill, SB 5, was sponsored by 49 Republican legislators with no Democratic support of the bill, with the argument being that the bill did not do enough to expand voter access. And there was no particular event that led to the passage of this bill, but rather a movement in some states that called for stricter voting laws. Policy formulation. Before SB 5 came to be, there was a Senate bill called SB 14, which was thought to be discriminatory and less inclusive. This policy was formed analogously because it attempted to solve the issue of voter fraud with ID requirements. But lawmakers later realized the bill needed revision in order to make ballots more accessible, which is why they now formulated new methods to show proof of identification. Governor Abbott passed this bill in June of 2017 and was amended by the Senate on March 27, 2017. Policy budgeting. While there was no specific budget attached to the bill, Texas had spent nearly $2 million on voter education and voter outreach following the passage of this bill. The bill also does not require a budget because taxpayer dollars are being used to educate the public and provide training for poll workers and providing IDs. Policy implementation. SB 5 was passed with the intent to restrict voters who do not have a necessary form of ID from casting their ballot, but later incorporating provisions in the stopgap interim order for the 2016 presidential election. The interim order opened up the polls by allowing voters to cast a ballot if they had a current utility bill, bank statement, or paycheck, and had signed a reasonable impediment declaration that explained why they lacked one of the seven acceptable forms of ID using both an authoritative and capacity technique. Policy Evaluation District Judge Melba Gonzalez-Ramos has ruled that the 2011 voter ID law disproportionately targeted minority voters who were less likely to have the forms of ID that the bill demanded, and had also been evaluated by organizations such as the ACLU and Brennan Center for Justice. People have thought that SB 5 is still not as inclusive to minority voters as it should be. And while the process of this policy is difficult to evaluate due to the nature of the bill, opponents argue that it does very little to prevent voter fraud. Critics of this policy say that voter ID law should treat citizens fairly and not undermine one's ability based on access to specific IDs.